Hello everyone, I'm just going to check that I'm running live. And yep, looks like I'm now live. So there we go. So welcome everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, this is entirely off the cuff. I, I wasn't expecting to be doing this right now. Let me just get my system set up. Okay, yeah, I was not planning to be doing this. This is something that I just uh, decided to do off the cuff, as I have in, in the past. Purely because I'm working on some material that I think you would find very interesting. Um, and I, I do believe that academia, as I've said before, is negligent. Academia has not been covering this material because I believe there's a preference for certain things, which has them obviously, which distorts their view, which leads them to promote certain ideas, push certain ideas down, and so on. So welcome Ibn Abbas, welcome Onyx, and thank you Vilonis for being here. Always, always good to see you. And I appreciate your support. Cup of Soup, Mark II Technologies. Hi guys. I, I literally decided five minutes before this that I would do this. Um, I will do a stream tomorrow to introduce more of this material, and uh, it's really a preview that I want to do for material I will be covering with Sam Shamoon on his channel. Welcome Karan. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Okay, let me dive right in. Um, it's it's late here, but I, I just sometimes I I come across material that is so disturbing to me, that is so frustrating, that that I, I want to scream. I, I, it's it's hard to explain. When I first came across the Sharia material on little kids, I I sat here crying. I had tears in my eyes, and it's it's horrifying. So yeah, so I just I just feel like I need to speak about it. Uh, let me see, we have Solution. God bless you from Europe. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, my audio is in and out. Okay, please tell me if... Let me just adjust that. Okay, let me know if this fixes my audio. I know I do have a problem with my audio, and I think that's uh, that's on me. Is there any way in Islam saying Mo was a shepherd? Um, yes, when he was four years old. That's from Brando16. Sorry to bother you. Is there any way in Islam in the Sirah? When he was four, now look, this depending on the source, you're going to find multiple different narratives. But Muhammad was apparently tending sheep, right? And then, of course, Gabriel and another angel, or maybe a guy called Frank and a guy called Louis, who knows? These two angels come down, they take Mo, they cut him open. And in some narrations, he's got friends watching, and some he's alone. They cut him open from throat down to navel. They remove his heart. They wash his heart in a bowl of gold with a bowl of ice from Zamzam water. And they remove a little speck of blackness, which is the evil in him. And they remove the evil from him. This tiny little speck. They put his heart back. They wash his organs. And then Mo is made pure. And um, this is called lustration. It's based on an Egyptian idea where you are purified. Except in Egypt, this happens after death. Whereas in most cases, it happens while he's alive. So symbolically... He is the shepherd, so that's obviously stolen from the idea of Jesus. Two, he is, this is aping this idea of this Egyptian mysticism. So yeah, so there's multiple different versions of the story, but Mo is a shepherd as a little boy when his heart is removed. Legendary development is so obvious in Islam. That's from Villainous, yes, and I, I do agree. So guys, I will try to be more careful with my audio. I do realize I look at this monitor, then I look at this one, which is quite a distance from me. It's actually far away. And um, so then my audio goes in and out, and I'm aware of it. So thank you for those who've criticized me on this issue. You're right. I will do my best to to keep proper audio. I w I'm in the UK. I heard Adnan Rashid saying he was a shepherd. Yeah, so that's in the Sira. That's where I have found it. There may be other sources I've missed, but that's where I found it. Uh, God bless you, Lloyd. How do you find your background sold you pick? Um, actually, I looked up pictures for the Crusades. And then I, I, I found this image, but what I had to do was I had to extend the background. So I, I duplicated the, 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 the mist, the smoke effect. Um, I duplicated the mist smoke effect uh, using, you know, PaintShop. Actually, I use, what do I use? Um, I use PaintShop Pro, I think. And then, um, and yeah, so I extended the image, resized it. So yeah, I did a little bit of uh, Photoshopping. Um, Last Supper Apologetics says, always great to see you, brother. You're one of the best when it comes to presenting material in a clear, concise manner. May God, Father, uh, 
of heaven and our Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Amen. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate all the kind words. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I do want to. I mean, I, I, my channel, I think, is educational. I try to make it educational. I wanted to use this material. That's why I give my archive away. And um, I recently gave away um, my PowerPoint presentation and the notes that I used on Sam Shamoon's, uh, which I used on Sam Shamoon's channel, my talk on pedophilia in Islam. Uh, let me just make sure I've missed, I've missed no comments. So... Um, now in real time, two streams, DCCI, okay, I had no idea. I don't, I don't watch how to touch. Um, I don't follow that channel. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Let's just jump into this so that I don't, it's, as I said, it's late here and I just felt I had to do this because it was really bothering me and I wanted to just get it off my chest. Okay. This is a French Wikipedia page and it's being translated right now. It's by a scholar called Renaud Secha, right? I'm assuming I'm, I'm pronouncing his name well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Corin. Uh, good job on the background photo. Okay. So he he was born in France. He's French. He's a he's a well-known historian. Um, his work was vetted by well-known historians. And thank you very much, Carmel. Much appreciated. What is today's topic? We're going to be talking about atheism, the French Revolution, the occult, and atheism. Yeah, I said that one twice because... It, yeah, well, we'll talk about it. Let's go on. So... He wrote a very interesting book. Let me show you what he wrote. So this is his book, A French Genocide, The Vendée, by Renald Secher, okay, translated by George Holock. This is an, an almost unknown genocide. Now, there are many scholars that try to turn it into something less than a genocide, but this man grew up in this region. So historically, he's tied to this region. His family's there. So the Franco-French Genocide, okay, this is taken from Renald Secher's book, and it's a historical essay on the Vendée War from 1793 to 1800 and the French Revolution published in 1986. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but what I want to show you is what happened in the French Revolution because the French state at the time was the very first atheist state. They formally rejected Christianity. Christianity was made illegal, right? Atheism is, atheism has blood on its hands. Atheism is not innocent of anything. The, the deep shame that I think atheists have for what they know to be their true history makes them hide all of this, okay? So this is the history of atheism. This is where modern atheism starts, and this is the outcome. Now, atheists always make the claim, with atheism, once they replace religion, they will bring peace on earth. They will bring rationality. We're going to have a look at the kind of rationality they brought. So let me... Okay, so what you have, let's have a look here. According to his thesis, now this, as I said, this is a well-known text. And apparently, okay, so laws were passed by the French government, by the French atheist government. And of course, the atheists are going to come out and say they weren't real atheists. August 1st, 1793, prescribing the extermination of the men, the deportation of the women and children, and the destruction of the territory. That means burning the villages down, burning the houses prescribing the extermination of all the brigands. The brigand is anyone that would fight against them. So in Islam, this would be the kufr harbi, right? Anyone who would fight against the Muslims, they were considered brigands, right? Anyone who didn't want to abandon Christianity, become an atheist, and follow the government. Now, so what they have here is the, the massacre of luc sur includes brigands in the state of embryos, babies, and children. So these brigands that needed to be exterminated included babies in the womb, okay, young infants and children of whom 110 were under eight years old, right? And then, of course, let's continue. The means of extermination. So let's have a look at the means of extermination employed by these rational atheists. So he lists the proto-industrial means implemented by the emissary of the Committee of Public Safety, at Ponce de Tse, bags are made from men's or women's skin. Policemen's trousers are made from human skin. Bread ovens are used to burn the villagers alive in luc sur -Bolon, and cremation takes place in the church. In many cases, they would burn people to death in the church. Now, you will notice already from this, if you're familiar with what the Nazis did, this is, this is on the same page. 
extermination camps are established in Nourmatière. Please excuse me if I'm butchering the French. Unsuccessful gassing attempts were carried out by the chemist deputy Antoine Francois Foucault, then by the pharmacist Joseph Louis Proust, who developed a device using a leather ball. So they tried to use chemical warfare to kill people. Boats are sunk in the Loire. These are the drownings of the Galiots, or what is known better as the Republican marriages. They would undress men and women, now not just men and women, specifically nuns and priests. They would be stripped naked, tied together, sometimes with a log to make them drown, and they would be pushed off boats and drowned in the river. They killed thousands, thousands, as many as 10,000 people. When they ran out of nuns, they would take two naked priests or two naked men. They would tie them together in, well, let's just say in a homoerotic pose, and they would kill them by drowning. This was a way of, shall we say, this was an early attempt at industrial genocide, right? So, yeah, government, new idol, government, new god. Yeah, we're going to get into that. It's almost like the atheists were waging jihad. Villainous, yes, yes. It's hard to get away from that image. It is very hard to get away from that image. Um, so, Kaolu Solution says, I'm so happy to see you live. I was working on a project, but when I got a notification that you're live, I had to stop my work. So thank you very much for that. Right. So this is atheism. In Clisson, fat is extracted by the carbonization of the villages to make soap. Now, now we, we can argue whole day about the validity of the Nazis doing this because it certainly did happen at least to a small degree, right? However, they would make a fire, put a grill on top of it, and put French women on top of the grill, and they burned them alive, and then the soap would fall down, the, the fat would fall down, and they made soap with it. So yes, trying to humiliate the Christians and make them feel subdued, correct, villainous. So understand, this, this is what they did, making clothes of human skin, right? So this is what this French page. Now, fortunately, with the means of new AI and other technology, we can now start to access documents in other languages, papers in other languages like French or Croatian or Serbian or, and so on, right? Hitler was pro-Islam. Yes, we, Eric and you are 100% correct. I'm going to be doing two talks, two very detailed talks on Hitler and his pro-Islam stance. We're going to be going into that in depth. I'm still working on these presentations, adding more detail, but it is undeniable. Okay, now, okay, I'm just going to go from here. Uh, we're going to go, obviously, I'm on Sam Shamoon's channel on Thursday. I'll be talking about atheism. So now let me go, where was I here? This is a French genocide, the Vendée, right? And now I want to take you to a paper called Old Gods in New Clothes, the French Revolutionary Cults and the Rebirth of the Golden Age. And then I will briefly touch on, actually, you know what? Let me go to my present, let me go to a PowerPoint presentation. I'll start here. I'm going to do a few pages of this, not every page. Uh, so I just need to track where I'm going. And uh, I want to give an introduction, but I want you to understand. I want you to learn this. I want you to talk about this. I want you to discuss it in social media. Present this. Take screenshots if you have to. Um, I'll be happy to share some of this with you. Um, you know, and atheists need to, they need to own this. Right. Do you recommend buying the book? Uh, the book is available in my archive. So the book is available in my archive. So you will be able to find the book. Let me just get to that reference for you again. If you look up Secha, you will find this in my Google archive. It links always in the description to my full research archive. Viola 90, Polish here. Um, Dobry wieczór. Um, Witaj. So um, Hitler was a great fan of Muhammad. Okay, so on this topic... Um, okay, briefly, let me show you briefly what this is about, then I'll show you some. So this is just an overview of what I'm working on at, at the moment, right? So this is a thesis. Now, very often when you struggle to find material, like let's say certain Islamic material, and it's hard to get it, it's behind a paywall, which is sometimes, it's almost impossible. You will often find a thesis that talks about the topic. And you can find these theses very often, they're public, download them, and they will quote, and they will discuss relevant sections of that. So that's a very good way to get hold of these things, okay? Right, so, correct, Rosemary, Mr. H was only a Christian when he was appealing for voters, right, for his government, and then afterwards he turned on them. Uh, where, do, where do you get all these documents? Um, that's classified information, Brandon. <laughs> um, okay, let me talk about this. 
this paper is very interesting. This is really interesting. Now, this is a topic that has been examined recently, in the last 20 years or so. There's been more and more examination of the occult within, a, within, within the Nazis, right? Within the Nazi ideology. Now, this was obviously once considered the domain of conspiracy theorists, you know, crazies, loonies. Now it's taken seriously. There are more and more scholars that are researching the occult within Nazism, right? Within the beliefs of the Nazis. However, this has been overlooked because many, many scholars actually have a preference, a bias towards the French Revolution. The French Revolution brought liberty, equality, fraternity, and so on. The French Revolution brought insanity, savagery, barbarity. It, it, was, it was a dark period. Okay, So chapter two, mysticism and the occult in ancient regime France and esotericism or esotericism in the revolutionary cults, right? So briefly, I'm not going to go through all of this, but let's go through some highlights. Officially advertised as a celebration of the unveiling of the new constitution, right? Once they overthrew the old regime, this festival featured some of the most bizarre iconography, right? And Jacques-Louis David, he's an artist, and there's a very interesting story around him I will cover with Sam. This, st this statue was of a bare-breasted Egyptian nature goddess, Isis, the head goddess of the ancient Egyptian pantheon. Now, these are rationalists who are looking at Christianity as completely superstitious, as unnatural, as something that is primitive. And now they have turned to paganism. This fate comprised an interesting melange of images, considering this was no procession belonging to a Greco-Roman mystery religion because it resembled one, but a new secular religion of an enlightened republic. Atheism was a rejection of Christianity and the creation using the template of Catholicism, using the template of Christianity to create a new secular religion. Atheism was founded as a religion. Please understand this. Radical political leaders copied and reshaped ancient concepts, symbols, and religious rituals for the sake of creating a new state religion designed to replace Catholicism in France. Robespierre repackaged pre-Christian religious traditions as a new rational and national natural religious system. Right? They followed the romantic philosophical cues of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. The new religions of state would strip off the quote-unquote superstition of the church and return man to a mythical golden age guided by general revelation. And it was mythical. He had an entirely mythical view of history. Christianity was officially outlawed in France in 1793. It was a byword for backwardness, and the state equated it as the opposite of all things enlightened, as opposed to the pagan-influenced traditions of the new state. This is the very first atheistic state. This is the first modern Western atheistic religion. Because once you've... Hey, horse, welcome. Damian, welcome. Once you've stripped out Christianity, you leave a void. And they filled that void with these crazy beliefs. Atheism is not neutral. Atheism is paganism. We can trace it back to Greek paganism, as these people did as well. And we can certainly start tying it to the occult. Because if there is no God, but because they chose not to believe in God, yes, it was. this was horrific. I, I, I can't explain to you how bad this got. Anti-Christian government can marry paganism to the in vogue quote-unquote natural philosophy and tout this new amalgamated belief system as rational, right? So rationalized superstition would rear its ugly head again during the first half of the 20th century in the Third Reich, highlighting the dangerous power of secularized state religion. The cultural historiography of Nazism has begun to explore the unholy brew of occultism, mysticism, and ancient pre-Christian traditions, mytho-history, and scientism in recent years. Previously, such topics as the influence of popular occultism in national socialism were the sole stomping grounds of pseudo-historians and conspiracy theorists. So what they say, welcome, Tony. Welcome, DHC. So this was once conspiracy theory. Now it's, it's taken as historical fact, right? So, but, so what they're saying is now, for some reason, this has escaped the attention of, us, of his, historians in terms of the French Revolution, right? So historians continue to ignore the eccentricities of the French Revolution's state cults, right? Atheism was the cult of reason. No wonder they fall for Islam now, correct? You strip out one set of ideas, you then, you have this void, this, you know, and, and thus Islam and other crazy occult pagan ideas come into the void. No Christ leaves room for Satan, exactly. So I didn't know that every day you learn something. So Damian, what was it you did not know? Um, 
And yeah, guys, thank you. Someone's just described. I mean, do, dokuha, dokuhaki, dokuhaki. Welcome. So thanks all. Right. Okay. I'm just going to just quickly, quickly touch on this. Okay. Um, the French Republic avoided leaving a vacuum as de-Christianization ripped away the rituals and emblems of the Galician church. Well, also that's the French church. while also promoting the utopian idea of the revolution. Utopia again. The state cults emulated elements from Roman Catholicism, Catholicism, borrowing motifs from antiquity, from paganism. The role of the occult as an influence in the construction of France's idealistic neoclassical religions. So these ideas were all there. Understand? So, so what they did was they they just noticed th this cult that they created, this atheist cult, emphasized. Let me see emphasized rationalism, universalism, and communalism, which is what you would call communism. Rationalism, universalism, communalism, communism. Revolutionary cultural, cultural practices created national unity. So they were revolutionary. This is their jihad, right? And she, so, yeah. And also there was classical and Masonic influences in the festival's designs. Okay, so hopefully I've said enough there. I'm not going to go through this paper in depth. I'll do this more tomorrow. So now let's look at the de-Christianization of France by atheists. Is this all making sense so far? Right? The paper, that paper is linked in the description box. You can download it and get it for yourself. Right? I will, uh, let me actually, you know what? Let me paste the link to the, um, to the Van Dee book so that you guys can, um, So that you can download it for yourselves. Okay, I'm just going to get the link for you guys. Uh, it's called the French Genocide, the Vendee. Give me one moment. And I've got the name. And now I just need to get the link, copying the link. Okay, so I am now going to drop this in the chat. That's the French book. You can download it at that link. Okay, I've just done it three times in a row. You won't miss it. And uh, let me see what one of you wants to tell me. Hello there, Erkan, welcome. Okay, right, now let's go here. Dechristianization of France by atheists. This is Fyodor Dostoevsky. If there is no God, then everything is permitted. So the French atheists decided to dechristianize France by murder. And we've seen the lengths they would go to. Uh, MySpace, Veronica Redeem says, I have Huguenot ancestors and I feel ashamed for not knowing their plight. It was vicious. I, I can't explain to you how vicious it gets. The, 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 the atheists, these rational atheists were the most, it was demonic. I, I can't explain to you. It's demonic what they did. Um, okay, now let's, let's see. So, at Calm's prison in Paris, at Calm prison in Paris, over a hundred Catholic priests were jailed within an old monastery. They refused to convert, and thus they were killed for it. I'll be going into much more detail on this in the future over the next few weeks with Sam. A mob stormed the prison, and in that incident, they killed 115 priests. That bloodbath was one of several such bloodbaths, remembered as the September massacres, and over a thousand people died in that incident. Right? These atrocities, these atrocities were part of a deliberate campaign. It was the law. Can you buy those books? Yes, you can, of course. It was an escalating campaign of violence known as de-Christianization. And these atheists violently purged religion from France, from France in the name of reason and rationality. You see, because they stated, it's so crazy when you read it, they said, we need to get rid of superstition and fanaticism. That's why we have to murder all the Christians including men, women, children, babies, and nuns. They have to murder them all to get rid of fanaticism and superstition. So, yeah, this, this is atheism. This is where atheism always leads, genocide and oppression. So, let me see. Um, now, atheists like Pierre Chamet and Jacques Hebert argued this was necessary so that reason would triumph over superstition and fanaticism, all in the name of reason. Correct, horse. Right? In there, as the churches were weeds in needs of plowing so that their enlightened ideas could grow, crosses were seized from altars, bowels were melted down, calendar was changed, 
Sunday was removed so that there would be no time to worship. And this is what the Muslims also did. The secularists no longer wanted to base their dating system around the birth of Jesus. That's why we have CE instead of AD and BC. They reset the count and based it upon the birth of their revolution. Now, the Soviet Union did the same, and also the Muslim Hijra calendar is the same. So understand, they are copying the Soviet Union and the jihadis. So, great start, right? So, yeah, murder the fanatics, says the fanatics, yeah. So, okay, let's continue. This was the worship of reason. So, this is the return of paganism. They sought to replace Christianity with their own belief system, the cult of reason. It was the first state-sponsored atheistic religion. Now, you have no need to be ashamed, now look, of Christianity. Now, yes, Christians did bad things. It is not part of the doctrine. It is a deviation from doctrine. This is atheist doctrine. This was their doctrine. Right? So we'll we'll have to start dealing with, with atheists much more head-on because, the, seriously, they they need to answer for this. It was a godless alternative to churches where citizens could hear sermons that instilled virtue with no biblical language. Churches were deconsecrated, becoming temples of reason, and they were personified reason as a woman bearing a torch. Here she is, just so you know. The atheists made up their own holiday for it, okay, at Notre Dame. Altars were rededicated to truth and liberty, and of course, uh, wild sex. And yeah, so... And Lady Liberty replaced the Virgin Mary on several altars to symbolize enlightened thinking. So they just replaced one symbol with another. They didn't replace religion. They just made their religion. A religion made in the image of man. Man in the image of man, which is narcissism. They saw themselves as the gods. Okay. The principles, the cult of reason was based on enlightenment. Its guiding principle was to exercise reason. It was also anti-clerical. Right. Now its goal was the perfection of man. Right. And of course, yeah, there was, okay, I'm going to skip through this because I don't want to get too long into this. I do want to make a note that when you look at the, the, the satanic temple, the satanic temple, now, of course, these enlightenment thinkers were very much saying that they followed enlightenment values. Well, the very same enlightenment values are followed by the temple of Satan, right? The temple of Satan. And also make a note here, satanic atheism. This is Anton LaVey. He, Satanism, is atheistic. Now, of course, we all know that, well, let me continue. It's a carnal religion. In other words, a sexual religion, hedonistic. Followers believe that all gods are fictitious. Ultimate importance is found in the self, that is narcissism, pursuing self-interest. Satan, to them, is not a deity, but a metaphor, the ultimate adversary of irrationality and religious beliefs. The term Satan is from he who opposes. Let me continue here. Okay, the Temple of Satan endorses for enlightenment values, right? And let's continue. This is Aaron Ra, arch-atheist. He's an atheist activist. Now, for someone who lacks belief, it's crazy that he's arguing for a lack of belief, for a psychological state. Welcome to Duzo. Now, he says here, now, as everyone knows, as you may or may not know, Aaron Ra, arch-atheist, came out as a Satanist in public. Why did I join the satanic, satanic temple, he says? Because in the time of imposition of the Christian right, the Satanists are the good guys. The Satanists are the ones advocating for tolerance. And I joined the satanic temple to join their human rights activism. So yeah, the Satanists, and of course the satanic temple has launched at least two lawsuits in Idaho alone to protest abortion laws because they want to kill people. Yeah, he's a hardcore atheist, but he's a hardcore Satanist. So that slaughtering in France, similar to slaughtering in Croatia, was being in communism. Yes, correct. Now, understand the the same kinds of crimes that you see now within the French Revolution, you will find in communist countries. Right? Yeah, he's a clown, a pompous clown. I know. I mean, the guy's, yeah, yeah. Dumber than a bag full of hammers, right? Okay, let me continue. Um, uh, Let me just... Okay, so let's have a quick run through some of the crimes these guys committed. The revolutionary atheists passed the law that all non-conforming clergy, those who would not adopt atheism, would be killed on sight. This was law, understand? This was the rational people that the atheists appeal to, these enlightenment thinkers, that they appeal to as paragons of rationality, were evil. They passed law, making murder legal. I don't know what an autotheist is, Eric. And I mean, look, to be honest, I think atheists make up bullshit names to describe atheism because the moment they get embarrassed, 
with one definition, they make up another one, right? It's all atheism to me, right? So well, once you go like, well, you know, actually, you know what? I'm actually one of these other atheists that has nothing to do with atheism because like Islam, atheism has nothing to do with atheism. Anyone who harbored these enemies was subject to death, okay? This is Jean-Baptiste Carrier. He enforced the law by loading priests and nuns like cattle onto boats, ferrying them down the Loire River, right? He murdered them, right? This proved too inefficient for mass execution. So eventually, they just sank the boats with everyone accepting oneself as God. Well, yeah, that's the standard. So autotheism, so this is a standard atheist position because you are the highest of creation, right? There's nothing higher than you. So there is no God. So therefore, mankind is the highest level of creation because you've got this brain, except you're just a bunch of chemicals sloshing together, right? Following in your, your thoughts are simply just following physical processes. So there's no meaning to life, right? This leads to nihilism. So non-conformance as in theists, yes, anyone who would not adopt atheism as the state religion and renounce Christianity was to be killed. So up to 9,000 people were murdered in the drownings alone in the cause of atheism, right? Because the, the, the nuns had to die, right? So according to Reynold Secher, okay, this was a systematic policy and we know this is so. And of course, this is the guy that carried it out. Never have I had so much amusement as in seeing the last grimaces of priests as they die, right? So atheism is religion, Atheism was founded, modern atheism was founded as a religion. Okay, I'm going to now talk about this. So this is the Franco-French genocide. I've shown you guys this, right? This is the book Liberty or Death by Peter McPhee on the French Revolution. This is General Westerman. He exalted, he said, the Vendee is no more. This is a report he sent back to the French government. It died under our swords with its women and children. I've just buried it in the swamps and woods of Savonay. I don't have any prisoners. I exterminated all of them. So he murdered prisoners. This goes against fundamental Western tenets of not murdering prisoners. This is a war crime. So we are talking about war criminals, and this sounds exactly like Islam. So guys, if you if you like this, if you find it interesting and useful, I mean, I don't think this is commonly taught in history, right? I, I'd never heard this stuff before, right? So understand, these historians are protecting atheists. They are protecting war criminals. They are protecting sadists. Okay, the Marquis de Sade was an atheist, right? The man who has a name as one of the worst human beings in history was an atheist, right? Jeffrey Dahmer, atheist, all right? Start, we, we can start to do a fun, atheists, we follow science. Screw that religion stuff, we follow science. Well, I have started some time back a discussion, at least a presentation on the crimes of science because man, Science solves everything, right? No, no, no. We can get into some serious crimes of science. Crimes by scientists, these rational scientists. We will get into that. Crimes by atheists, okay? They have no leg to stand on. Believe me, they might talk big. They might talk smart. At some point, this is going to turn. People are going to look at atheism in a completely different way. Right, and they says here that we're not taking prisoners Otherwise, we would have to give them the bread of liberty, and pity is not revolutionary. They had no pity. There was no forgiveness in them, right? Robespierre had a bunch of them. Okay, so this is the book I've mentioned, The French Genocide, The Vendée. Now it says here, in this, these men were following Saint-Just, who in a report to the Commission of Extraordinary Means dated August 14, 1793, declared, in Meudon, they are tanning human skin. Skin coming from men has a consistency and quality superior to chamois cloth. That from women subjects is suppler, but it has less strength. So they were literally taking people's skin off and using it. In Clisson, in April 1794, soldiers of General Crozat burned 150 women to extract fat from them. We made holes in the ground, one of them testified, to place cauldrons to catch what fell. We had put iron bars above and set the women on top. Then above them was the fire. Two of my comrades were with me for this affair. I sent ten casks of it to Nantes. It was like embalming fluid. It was used in hospitals. Um, hey Lloyd, so Villain says, Hey Lloyd, I've noticed a comparative pattern comparing Christianity and atheist Islam. Can we Skype on it? Certainly. Yeah, we can have a chat tomorrow if that's okay with you. It's a bit late here already. It's getting to 11 p.m., but... Uh, um, from the UK, Mal Donnelly, welcome. Uh, did I miss anyone? Hopefully I haven't missed any comments. 
If you want me to respond to a comment, better at tag my name so that I can see that, have a better chance of seeing it. Um, so yeah, 150 women burned alive to get the fat from their bodies. People having their skin removed, right? James Two and Dave Farina, you know, Dave Farina is an idiot. So a surgeon named Thomas wrote, I've seen women and men burnt. I've seen 150 soldiers mistreat and rape women, girls of 14 and 15, and then massacre them and toss from bayonet to bayonet tender infants left next to their mothers stretched out on the ground. This is not the only such, such atrocity. They would throw babies from balconies and catch them on bayonets, and then they would take the babies and throw them from bayonet to bayonet. This is atheism. This is atheists being creative because there is no God, there is no punishment. This is rationality. This is what atheists appeal to and what they hide. This is what academia hides. So, a helping hound, look, I don't know, you know, you're going to have to give me references and evidence for your claims because most people, when they come and give me claims like this, I honestly, I'll tell you, they're talking bullshit to me, honestly. So, so I'm going to want some serious claims, right? Um, according to Carl Sagan, you're made of stardust, but it is stupid that God created us from dust makes, yeah, whatever. So, okay. Um, yeah, Alex, I've, I will cover Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan claimed to be an agnostic. Carl, he was an atheist in, for all intents and purposes. Okay. He was an atheist. Let's, let me continue here. Okay. Uh, Oops, looks like I made a wrong mistake here. So let me just go and fix my slide. I see how I forgot to do something here. Um, animation. Actually, we just shift this away. I'll just take it away. I just had to move that. Okay, so the president of the district expressed surprise on January 25. Your soldiers who call themselves Republicans indulge in debauchery and all the horrors which even cannibals are incapable Everywhere we go, we bring fire and death. Neither age nor sex nor anything else is respected. Yesterday, our detachments burned a village and they would often burn these people alive, right? Well, let me just go back here, back to you. So, everywhere we go, we bring fire and death, right? A volunteer killed three women with his bare hands. It is horrible, but the safety of the Republic urgently requires it. So we had to murder three women, but for the safety of the Republic, we had to do it. Every person we see, we shoot. The earth is littered with corpses. Rape and the most outrageous barbarity show up at every turn. We have seen Republican soldiers rape rebel women on stones piled on the sides of the main roads and then shoot and stab them when they leave their embraces. Others carrying nursing babies on the point of a bayonet or a pike that had run through mother and child in a single stroke. Now, according to the professor that vetted, one of the professors that vetted the PhD thesis, this, this book, he stated that the author had understated and left out details because it was even more horrific than what they report in the book. Okay. Um, Kaskarabia says, hey, Lord, I'm, I'm researching the Alamo subject and the Democratic Party involved in slavery. Did the atheism? I would most certainly think so. Um, the Democratic Party was pretty filthy. Yes. All the way from top to bottom. Um, Sekrima says, Marxists claim the bourgeoisie as their arch enemies and yet they adopt in the whole, the bourgeois revolutionary hatred of God and Christianity. Yes, in truth, all these revolution movements are from hell. I'd have to agree. Nihilism, <laughs> nihil Islam can be explained meaning or short definition. Uh, yeah, sometimes I don't understand what you guys are saying. It's like it's English words, but I have no idea what you said. Baudesson, the general manager of military supplies, made the following statement. The road from Via to Cholet was littered with corpses, some dead for three or four days. Others just expired. Victims with their throats cut. Scattered houses were half burned. General Avril rejoiced in having put down the rebels of saint Lefal To the number of 100, a number of them were roasted when all the houses in town were burned. There were poor girls completely naked, hanging from tree branches, hands tied behind their backs after having been raped. A girl from La Chapelle was taken by torturers who raped her and then hung her head down from an oak. Each leg was attached separately to a branch of the tree and separated from one another as far as possible. In that position, they split her body with a sword all the way down to her head and cut her in two. So this is atheism in practice. 
right? This is atheism in practice. So what led up to this? This was simply the decision that Christianity was superstitious, Christianity was false, it was primitive, and it had to go, it had to make way for rationalism and reason. They were murdering Catholics. Yes, they most certainly were. One of them clung to a crippled mother's chair, a soldier, furious at being unable to make her let go, and sheathed his sword and cut off her hand. Women were thrown out of windows onto bayonets pointed in their direction. There were many more atrocities, which they called the Day of the Great Massacre. You can still see today a little street where the corpses were piled up and from which flowed a stream of blood as far as Legano. Children in their cradles were pierced and carried still breathing on the points of bayonets. So, yeah. So you understand, this is a case of the reign of terror flooded the streets with innocent blood, claiming over 40,000 victims. At the end of the day, at least 270,000 people died. Right, murdered in the most horrific fashion. People were burned. People were stuffed in ovens. People were... This was insanity. This is the kind of horror that you find in horror movies. And this atheism has always been political. Uh, Dashing Rogue, that is true. It has always been. It's a political social movement. It's a political social religion. So, yeah. So, prior to the revolution, there were many, mainly Catholics in France. Yeah, so... So yeah, I don't know. This this was outright warfare against the church. Um, so also though, they were against the noblemen's. Uh, they were against the noble the nobles as well. They, there was a whole thing. But this goes back to a heresy back in the 12th century that Luther even followed. I mean that Hitler followed. It was just there's a lot of odd there's a lot of odd things. When did this occur? This was um, July 17, 1794. The martyrs of Campen were led to the guillotine in Paris. The government ordered all convents to disband. These nuns refused. And so the atheists judged the nuns as traitors. Anyone who would not renounce religion was a traitor to the country and had to die. This was the law. Don't forget, 1794. Right, The mother superior was the last to be beheaded and killed. Apparently, they all went bravely to the blade while the nuns sang a hymn. And of course, as their numbers dwindled, the final voice was silenced. So, what is the LOL about? Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, you know, Helping Hound, I don't know who you are. And to be quite blunt, I don't care. Right? So, you know what? I am just going to say goodbye to the camera. Right? For you anyway. Have a nice day. Now, so the revolutionary government of France fell 10 days after the nuns were murdered. So I wanted to introduce you guys to this. This is material I'll be, I'll be covering over the next while. Um, some of these I've discussed before, but I will be adding to this material to, to bring more detail. Uh, we will be discussing more of, as I showed you, the occult within the pagan influences and the occult influences within the Enlightenment and within the French Revolution. This is where it went. So understand you need to fight for Christian doctrine, for the Ten Commandments. You need to fight for, for common Christian virtue, for truth, because the result is madness, right? Well, Brandon Dry, I, uh, I, yeah, I banned the account. I, I don't care who that person is, and I'm not interested in finding out. So, so this is, yeah. No wonder why, while reading about the French Revolution, these terrible facts are not mentioned anyway. Yes, yes, of course, because these academics want to promote this whole enlightenment and all of these, these philosophers who were murderous, genocidal, brutal maniacs as, as great people, great atheists who brought enlightenment and who brought great thinking and great thoughts. And I mean, like they mentioned Rousseau, Rousseau had five children with, with the woman. He never met the children because every time they were born, he had them taken straight to an orphanage. And we'll be discussing this in the future. But of course, the point was that he, he gave all sorts of wonderful rationalizations for why he had to do this. The fact is the guy didn't care. But of course, people go, well, you know, the, the fact that he abandoned five children in a row and sent them straight to orphanage without meeting them doesn't mean that his theories and beautiful thoughts weren't correct or weren't true. Um, it means the man was a pig. Right? And maybe this wants to give us 
pause to think about his ideas, right? Why are we accepting this man as some kind of moral saint and his ideas as unimpeachable, unquestionable, when the man was obviously a pig? And you can go one by one through all of these great enlightenment thinkers and heroes who are regarded and respected by academics, and you will find out that every single one of them is an absolute filthy pig. It's just it's just frightening. So understand, academia is not your friend. You need to start reading, you need to start looking, and you need to fill in blanks that, that you don't even know are there. What finally stopped these acts in France? Well, um, Napoleon came to power. Napoleon came to power. Not to say that Napoleon wasn't one of these crazy maniacs either, because he went and did his own brutalizing, but uh, but the these cults just went way off the deep end. It just got to the point where it was just irrational. And he saw, he sees power and he just basically had to restore everything the way it was because they, they, they'd broken so far from the social fabric, right? Oddly enough, Christian social fabric is what holds Europe together. When you break the social fabric, it all falls apart, right? Because... These traditions, the, the Christian traditions, the Western traditions, are so are so steeped in Christianity, right? And they're the ones that pushed out these pagan views. Once you take the Christianity away, the pagan ideas come back. These traditions solved problems, right? And when you take away the Christian tradition, the problems come back. Islamic origins, car in the garage. Hey, I'm sorry about that. Hope the cars are right. They're not going to be expensive. So yeah, this was unexpected. This was off the cuff. But hopefully you've learned something. So we've discussed atrocities that I'd never heard of in the French Revolution, right? Yes, everyone, uh, guys, please subscribe to Mal's channel. Uh, go and see some of his uh, some of his latest material. There's some very interesting things. His discussion with Dr. Robert Kerr is fantastic, right? So these people were evil. Do not let atheists fool you, right? They've put up a brave facade for a long time. That facade is, it's, they're paper tigers, this is the face of atheism. This is the irrational face of atheism. Um, R.C. Roska says people are capable of such barbarity for whatever reason they feel right. It is so sad. Yeah, well, break the fabric, birth of the true anarchy. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, so for those who, um, so as I said, this is the birth of communism. This is the birth of, of industrial genocide, industrial level genocide. So, okay, so that's it from me. Uh, any final thoughts from you? I'm going to check if there's any comments that I happen to have missed. Dashing Rogue says, atheism is not a religion. Atheism is an ideology, same as Islam and Marxism. Yeah, actually fairly true, although, don't forget, it's, an, it's a theology. Okay, yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, religion is one thing, ideology is another, because, um, um, oh, good grief, now I can't remember the psychologist's name, um, but he says that ideology is a boil on religion, which... So Marxism is a theology. The atheism is a theology as well. So uh, my last name comes from nobles escaping the Netherlands and then later going to the Caribbean to give my ancestors a new name. Yeah, okay. Um, atheism is always political. Yes. Uh, let me see. Have I missed anything? Their vile and heinous behavior should not surprise us. They have no moral compass, and that is true. Um, yeah, let me see if there's any comments. Uh, there were no in-depth talks about the horrors of the French Revolution. Well, now we know why it, it was being protected. So notice atheism birth is all oppression. Yeah. Muhammad is the shepherd whose heart is washed. It is a wonder they could find his heart. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Mel. Yeah. So, okay, that's for me, guys. It's it's 11 p.m. here. I was not expecting to do this. Brandon Dry says, it is said that they sow many seeds to make people doubt the resurrection. Look, these ideas come from people that are horrendously fanatical these are secular fanatics right this is these are secular fundamentalists you need to call them what they are theological you need to call them theocratic they are secular fundamentalists they are pursuing their fundamentalist secular religion right? we will be talking about all of that in great detail and yeah we will be talking about their atrocities we'll be talking about the things that they hide because they, they try to claim the moral high ground by claiming that they have no no skeletons in the closet. Let me tell you, they, the ideology is born in blood. So, so guys, that's it. It's 11 p.m. I should stop here. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, do like, subscribe, share it with people, tell them. And look, you need to start, stop feeling ashamed. Stop 
stop allowing the, the stupid propaganda of atheism. And that term is actually a genuine term. The propaganda of atheism it was, was promoted by Lenin and Stalin. They created propaganda of atheism and guys like Bruno Bauer, like the one of the guys who promoted mythicism, Jesus mythicism, he was a mentor and friend of Karl Marx. He was a rabid atheist, right, called the robe spear of atheism. And of course, why would we want to take these rabid Marxists at their word? There's absolutely no reason to. Um, Viola 90, yes, I live in Poland. Yes, this is where I live. I, I live in Poland. So fanatical atheists are like slaves. Yeah, no, they are. So so that's it, guys. So thank you very much. And um, have a wonderful evening. And I will, I will chat with you again tomorrow. I'll be covering this again. I'll be going through this in a bit more depth. Um, just trying to see how this... But let me have your thoughts in the comments. And use this material. You have nothing to be ashamed of. These atheists, they have a great deal to answer for. Make them answer for it. Um, yeah, as I said in my post recently... Be the sand in the gears that breaks the machine. Even if you think you don't have a great deal of power, use your voice, speak, use the facts. You are the sand in the gears, grind those gears, break the machine.